concealer. We're talking 100% focusing on concealer for aging eyes. It is challenging as we age in general, obviously, and it can be as we see our skin and our, our face change as we age. As we are putting our makeup on overnight, it almost seems like something new is happening. And you know, it can be really frustrating. I think specifically the eye area, you know, all under here, it's very thin and delicate. It's the first usually to show the signs of aging and it continually seems to be more challenging as we age. It just, it just shows everything. You've got crepiness that can gather all the product that you're putting on there through the day. Um, and it is challenging actually to get things like setting powders to do their job and look oh, nice, you know, after you're done. And concealer, concealer becomes kind of a, a pretty important piece to our makeup routine because we generally, because our eye tissue is thinning, that it is going to show dark circles and that blood pooling that happens as we age. We can start to see some pigmentation and freckling in that area as well. And we would like to do our best to try to cover that up. With the crepiness, the aging, the fine lines and the wrinkles, it really becomes a battle and many just give up and say, you know what, I'm done. I, I guess I had my heyday and the makeup thing is just going out the door now. I'm here to tell you to not give up. I'm here for you. I'm going to share with you things that work for me um, and what I think is going to also help you no matter what your age you're going to find out that it really starts before the makeup even begins. I'm an esthetician by trade, and so I'm, I'm obviously going to have to talk to you about how to prep your eyes, that eye tissue, before you even set any sort of concealer on top of it, because that is going to be key in your success. All right, without further ado, let's get going on this. Prepping, prepping your eye tissue is really the absolute key. It is the most important part of this entire video. While I'm not talking about a specific concealer and what sort of concealers work best for aging skin, I think you're gonna come to the very quick conclusion that's not what this is about. This is about using your favorite concealer and optimizing it to its potential and supporting your eye tissue in the meantime. If you prep your eye tissue before you put your makeup on, you are going to notice an immediate difference in how your concealer wears through the day, on how nice and supple and hydrated your eye tissue will look through the day, even if you have to set your concealer with a powder, uh, such as, you know, I have to do that and I have to set my concealer or it's my eye makeup is just gonna be all over my face in no time. Okay, first thing, and I, I already did this, I accidentally did this, earlier before I decided, you know, recorded here, but I've put Peptide 38. This is um, a Rhonda Allison product uh, and it is loaded with really nice peptides in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put down in the description box and probably a card up here to direct you to learning about exactly what peptides are, the different kinds of peptides. I had a lot of fun doing that video. And if you haven't watched it, it's not too long and you'll walk away knowing a little more about peptides because they're very, very interesting and scientifically proven to do some pretty great things in the skin. So, so if you are looking at, you know, how can I support my aging skin? What sort of ingredients will benefit me? Peptides are a wonderful one. It's something you don't have to do by any means, but it is definitely supportive of aging skin. It definitely helps your skin on its journey and peptides are a wonderful addition to an anti-aging or age supporting skincare regimen. So I try to include them any way I can. This is my favorite peptide serum. Uh, Rhonda Allison, the line itself has many different peptide uh, choices, different serums and different formulations. This one happens to be my favorite. So this is uh, quite, uh, just, just nice and viscous. It's not super runny, um, kind of gel like, and I've already put it all over my face and usually I, and I even did it around my eyes, but I'm going to show you anyway again. So I'm going to double it up, I guess today. 
and I'm just really lightly going to to sort of put this around the eye tissue as well totally fine to do that with this particular product and this way on very dry skin um, it's drinking it in and I'm treating you know this delicate eye tissue around there with this serum as well lovely and you can do this twice a day I tend to only do this in the morning so now you don't have to do this step if you don't have something like this it's okay but you will want to do the next step so uh, this is key so if you don't care to use any sort of peptide serum that's okay I'm just showing you what I do so say you haven't done that that's okay so the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, add some lipids lipids are a missing piece that I see in so many sort of age support skincare regimens and so as an esthetician I immediately if I see that if I see that hole in my clients at home skincare routine I definitely am gonna fill that because they are going to see a remarkable difference in their skin when they start feeding their skin really nice lipids because lipids deplete as we age and they deplete pretty quickly after the age of 40. We hear a lot about hyaluronic acid and hydrating sort of humectants and how important it is to add those to our aging skincare routine. We hear a lot about antioxidants as well, as we should, both those things. But what I don't hear a lot about is adding lipids because it is so important and they do deplete. Let's see, when you start adding a nice lipid to your routine, that alone, if you don't touch anything else, it is going to make a difference pretty much right away. Now, your lipid component does not have to be really expensive. It should be a nice light blend, especially, specifically, for around the eye tissue. There could be a backlash for using just too heavy of either oil blends or creams around that delicate eye tissue, on that delicate eye tissue. So the peptide serum that I applied, very, very light. Serums usually are. This is a water-based serum, very light. We're okay there. Um, I'm already feeling kind of that really nice tightening effect that I get from Peptide 38. You know, it has those neuro sort of peptides in there that send signals to the muscles, tells them to just sort of quiet down. There are tightening peptides and I can feel them working. It's not uncomfortable and it's not over the top. So we're gonna add a very nice lipid component now to our eye tissue. Uh, Pumpkin E Serum by Rhonda Ellis. I'm kind of embarrassed because I need to wipe off this container, but um, I'm almost out of this. Pumpkin E Serum is a really nice light wonderful serum it feeds the skin wonderful nutrients it's got vitamin e in here as well as some vital nutrients for skin health very light smells wonderful and i just do really a couple you know one pump is a drop i do a couple pumps not all the way down but i get about you know a couple drops and i put this all over my skin so i'm gonna do that now and um I'm gonna put that right over the top. I've given a lot of time, you don't need that much time, for the Peptide 38 to completely absorb. So I'm gonna put that on. So I'm doing that everywhere. So then I just kind of go in and I put just the tiniest little drop, that's even too much. I'm gonna put a little bit on the back of my hand. And I'm just gonna rub that together and I'm, I'm just gonna pat that in now right around the eye tissue both above and and below and I'm gonna get it over here where the crow's feet feet are and even sort of down in here so I'm just kind of giving it a little double dose of you know right in here so I'm gonna do that get it up into the brow bone as well then once I distribute that usually ring fingers the best because you we can put the least amount of pressure on our ring finger compared to all our other fingers so then I just like to actually kind of really help to get that down into the skin, assist the skin to absorb that by adding it the heat from our skin and just kind of setting it there. You don't have to press, but just set it there and roll. So you're just gonna kind of press and roll that all the way around. You'd be surprised, it just really helps to get it down in the skin. So, and that body heat is gonna really assist that. So we're just gonna kind of help to to deliver that.
After that, I put my sunscreen on and I'm ready to go that day. So all I did was I washed my face. Sometimes I will use a lotion slash toner. So like the brightening pigment lotion is my go-to, love that. After that, let it dry, put my peptide 38 on and then my pumpkin serum everywhere. And there are many, that's, that's it for me a lot of the times after. And then of course sunscreen. And I do use sunscreen every day. I forgot to bring it up here though. So pretend I put my sunscreen on. Now, if you are more of an eye cream person, which you know, I have actually, if I, I'm feeling just really dehydrated, I have used a little bit of the Peptide 3-in-1 eye cream. This is my absolute favorite eye cream. You've heard me talk about this so much. I've used this for years myself, my clients, um, and it's just to me the queen mother of, of eye creams. It's beautiful. So, you know, if I'm feeling just I need that extra support, I'll go ahead and put the tiniest bit on my ring fingers and I will go ahead and put that right over the top of the pumpkin e serum. Um, and, and that is just absolutely beautiful to do that. You can do one or the other. You don't have to do both, but depending on sort of the condition of your eye tissue, the age you are, uh, or even at that point and that maybe, you know, you're, you're going into winter as we are, you're very dehydrated, you can tell your skin is just struggling, then it would be a nice extra supplemental thing to do is to add a little bit of that over the top. You can even, of course, use this by itself. You don't have to have the pumpkin e serum under. I'm just adding a little extra layer of vital nutrients to that delicate eye tissue, especially this time of year. I really do baby, um, especially my eye tissue this time of year as we transition into winter. Um, and I, I sort of just baby my, my skin itself, not necessarily by adding a big, huge amount of products, but just making sure I'm giving it even maybe sometimes a couple layers of different types of lipid serums and then sealing that off with maybe a really nice cream, I really do have to be careful. And if I don't get a handle on it soon enough, you know, early on before it's dead into winter, my skin is gonna uh, really suffer for it. So that's an example of something that I, that I do often. Okay, since this is not a makeup tutorial or a makeup video, I don't particularly apply my, my uh, concealer until after I get my foundation on. So I'm going to put my foundation on now and I will meet you back here when it's time to get my concealer going. All right, so we, we got that going now, got that on. I haven't put any powder on quite yet. So now I'm going to go ahead and use currently my favorite concealer, which is Born This Way. This is the travel size. I still have plenty of it. It's been lasting forever. So if you can get your hands on the travel size, it's like a glass container. It's a great way to try it out. See if you like it. You know, you know this, this has lasted me and I use it quite a lot. So here, here's what I've been doing. I just have been kind of focusing it right here in the corner. I want that to be really bright. And I might put a dot or so right here at the end of my eyes because I do tend to get a little bit of a hollow here. I mean everywhere, but this, this seems to be where um, this application sort of this seems to work the best. I do take a sponge. You can use your finger as well. So then what I do is I immediately kind of drag it straight down. And you've seen me do this, I think, in prior makeup tutorials. And I just bring it straight down and to the side. Kind of just don't pay attention really right in here quite yet. So straight down, same with this. I'm just gonna kind of get it right here in the corner. And if I have to use my finger, I certainly can. And then I'm just gonna kind of pounce it out here at the side. And I am quite crepey there in the corner. So I'll take kind of my pinky and just kind of press it into the crepiness right there and that's it that's all i've been doing with you know, how much and how i apply my concealer it's all about sort of playing with light and i like this concealer because it's not really matte i'm not about matte foundations matte concealers i don't even particularly care for matte lipsticks um, so this one's not over the top or anything but it's definitely not matte um, 
and you're thinking, well, what does it matter? You're gonna you're gonna apply some powder over it. Well, I think it matters on what kind of powder you ap apply over it, um, for sure. But still, if I just still don't like matte concealers, I think they really are a bit drying as well, and uh, I don't want that happening. That's for sure. The idea is to keep the eye tissue supple, sort of moist through the day, and that's all gonna come from what we put underneath it. Now, if you are really diligent about treating that eye tissue as we just did, then if you use something that's a little heavier and can be drying on that tissue, at least you're kind of supporting that underneath and, and, and saying, no, you're not drying out my tissue today, concealer. So it does help for sure. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to powder over it. And it is also challenging to find for me a really nice setting powder that A, doesn't uh, really get powdery looking on my skin, B, does not, as the day goes on, doesn't settle into my fine lines and wrinkles, and C, uh, just makes my skin look flat and lifeless and uh, you know finishing powders can do that so I have found one that I absolutely love there's a couple that I really like and this one is my current favorite and yes it is from Do You by Too Faced once again I still love this you guys I've talked about this before and I still absolutely do love this concealer so I'm using this with a big huge powder brush so I'm gonna go ahead and get my powder brush loaded and I'm gonna kind of go on my cheeks and just kind of start pressing it, patting it in. And I'm gonna work it all around my face. Why do I love this? Well, it's really unique, actually. It definitely acts as a setting powder, you know, and, and it, it really helps makeup stay longer through the day. But it also does create a really nice sort of glow. It's not, again, iridescent. It's not anything like that, but it just doesn't make my skin look flat. Um, and, and I love that. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more and I'm gonna pat it right over my eyes really carefully. And not a lot. And I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and, and work it in there. And that's it. Now here's my little hack that I've been doing and um, it's, it's, it's kind of killing two birds with one stone actually. At this point, I know this is weird, we just set our eye makeup. I know, but for some reason this works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Color Science Total Eye. This is an SPF, but the really unique, wonderful thing about this is, is it's an SPF 35 actually, which is pretty great for the eye tissue. It's made for the eye tissue, you guys. Um, and, and there are a, a couple other SPFs that are also made for the eye tissue. And I think that's wonderful because again, I do tend to get pigmentation under my eyes from obviously years gone by, sun exposure there. Um, so I love the fact that I can, can really protect my eye tissue for further damage. The thing about this though, if you are not aware, is it has this really light tinting to it. And it's quite, um, it, it's, it gives you this really lovely brightening effect. Beautiful, love it. This is the light, it comes in I believe light and medium or light medium and or is there more than one? I'm not sure. So I, there is like a little cooling um, applicator sort of thing but I hardly ever use it and I definitely don't use it when I do this. So I put a little bit on my ring finger and I just kind of rub it around. I don't need much. Okay, and then I just go ahead and I apply it at this point right under, on top. I apply it right on top of the eye tissue. And I just love kind of what it does. And it has been truly kind of a little bit of a fun game changer for my eye concealer game. So that that is kind of the the surprise or the hack that I have for you today. All right, so this is the final completed finished look for the day today. So I know, you, you, when you're over the age of 50, really you get into the 40s and on, you've got to prep your eye tissue. Not only are you gonna really help boost 
uh, you know, your makeup application and your makeup is going to wear so much nicer around the eyes through the day. It's going to even a lot of times look better and better. Uh, it's also going to feed that really delicate eye tissue that's quite thin, uh, some really great nutrients. So As always, I hope that you find this helpful, even if you take away just one thing that you find intriguing and you try it and it works great, that is wonderful. Always let me know. Always let me know when that happens. I want to know. It's, it's really wonderful to hear. All right, until the next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.